Hi, Sammy and Chloe. This is the second part of Chapter 5. Twenty minutes later, they left Ilop's Owl Emporium, which had been dark and full of rustling and flickering jewel-bright eyes. Harry now carried a large cage that held a beautiful snowy owl, fast asleep with her head under her wing. He couldn't stop stammering his thanks, sounding just like Professor Quirrell. Don't mention it, said Harry Hagrid gruffly. I don't expect you've had a lot of pres presents from them Dursleys. Just Ollivanders left now. Only place for wands, Ollivanders, and you gotta have the best wand. A magic wand. This was what Harry had been really looking forward to. The last shop was narrow and shabby. Peeling gold letters over the door read Ollivanders, makers of fine wands since 382 B.C. That's about 2,400 years ago. A single wand lay on a faded purple cushion in the dusty window. A tinkling bell rang somewhere in the depths of the shop as they stepped inside. It was a tiny place, empty except for a single spindly chair that Hagrid sat on to wait. Harry felt strangely as though he had entered a very strict library. He swallowed a lot of new questions that had just occurred to him and looked instead at the thousand of narrow boxes piled neatly from the floor to the ceiling on every wall. For some reason, the back of his neck prickled. The very dust and silence in here seemed to tingle with some secret magic. Good afternoon, said a soft voice. <clears throat> Harry jumped. Hagrid must have jumped too because there was a loud crunching noise and he got quickly off the spindly chair. An old man was standing before him, his wide pale eyes shining like moons through the gloom of the shop. Hello, said Harry awkwardly. Ah, yes, said the man. Yes, yes, I thought I'd be seeing you soon. Harry Potter. It wasn't a question. You have your mother's eyes. It seems like only yesterday she was in here herself, choosing her first wand. Ten and qu a quarter inches long, swishy, made of willow, wood, nice wand for charm work. Mr. Ollivander moved closer to Harry. Harry wished he, could, he would blink. Those silvery eyes were a bit creepy. Your father, on the other hand, favored a mahogany wand, 11 inches, pliable, a little more power, and excellent for transfiguration. That means changing people to different forms. Well, I say your father favored it. It's really the wand that chooses the wizard, of course. Mr. Ollivander had come so close that he and Harry were almost nose to nose. Harry could see himself reflected in those misty eyes. And that's where Mr. Ollivander touched the lightning scar on Harry's forehead with a long white finger. I'm sorry to say I sold the wand that did it, he said softly. Thirteen and a half inches. You, that's a kind of wood. Powerful wand, very powerful, and in the wrong hands. Well, if I'd known what that wand was going out into the world to do. He shook his head again. And then, to Harry's relief, he spotted Hagrid. Rubius, Rubius, Hagrid, how nice to see you again. Oak, 16 inches, rather bendy, wasn't it? It was, sir, yes, said Hagrid. Good wand, that one, but I suppose they snapped it in half when you got expelled, said Mr. Ollivander, suddenly stern and serious. Well, yes, they did, yes, said Hagrid, shuffling his feet. I've still got the pieces, though, he added brightly. But you don't use them, said Mr. Ollivander sharply. Oh, no, sir, said Hagrid quickly. Harry noticed he gripped his pink umbrella very tightly as he spoke. Hmm, said Mr. Ollivander, giving Harrod, Hagrid a piercing look. Well, now, Mr. Potter, let me see. He pulled out a long tape measure with silver markings out of his pocket. Which is your wand arm? Er, well, I'm right-handed, said Harry. Hold out your arm. That's it, he measured Harry from shoulder to finger, then wrist to elbow, shoulder to floor, knee to armpit, and round his head. As he measured, he said, 
Every Ollivander wand has a core of a powerful magical substance, Mr. Potter. We use unicorn hairs, phoenix tail feathers, and the heartstrings of dragons. No two Ollivander wands are the same, just as no two unicorns, dragons, or phoenixes are quite the same. And of course, you will never get such good results with another wizard's wand. Harry suddenly realized that the tape measure, which was measuring between his nostrils, was doing this on his own. Mr. Ollivander was flitting around the shelves, taking down boxes. That will do, he said, and the tape measure crumpled into a heap on the floor. Right then, Mr. Potter, try this one. Beechwood with dragon heart string. Nine inches, nice and flexible. Just take it and give it a wave. Harry took the wand and, feeling foolish, waved it around a bit, but Mr. Ollivander snatched it out of his hand almost at once. Maple and phoenix feather, seven inches, quite whippy. Try, Harry tried, but he had hardly raised the wand when it, too, was snatched back by Mr. Ollivander. No, no, here, ebony and unicorn hair, eight and a half inches, springy. Go on, go on, try it out. Harry tried and tried. He had no idea what Mr. Ollivander was waiting for. The pile of dried wands was mounting higher and higher on the spindly chair. But the more wands Mr. Ollivander pulled from the shelves, the happier he seemed to become. Tricky customer, eh? Not to worry. We'll find the perfect match here somewhere. I wonder now. Yes, why not? Unusual combination. Holly and Phoenix Feather. Eleven inches, nice and supple. Harry took the wand. He felt a sudden warmth in his fingers. He raised the wand above his head, brought it swishing down through the dusty air, and a stream of red and gold sparks shot from the end like a firework, throwing dancing spots of light on the walls. Hagrid whooped and clapped, and Mr. Ollivander cried, Oh, bravo! Yes, indeed. Oh, very good. Well, well, well. How curious, how curious, very curious. He put Hagrid's wand back into its box and wrapped it in brown paper, still muttering. So curious, how curious. Mr. Ollivander fixed Harry with his pale stare. Sorry, said Hagrid, but what's curious? I remember every wand I've ever sold, Mr. Potter, every single wand. It so happens that the phoenix whose tail feather is in your wand gave another feather, just one other. It is very curious indeed that you should be destined for this wand when its brother, why, its brother gave you that scar. <clears throat> Harry swallowed. Yes, thirteen and a half inches, and you made of you, wood. Curious indeed how these things happen. The wand chooses a wizard, remember. I think we must expect great things from you, Mr. Potter. After all, he who must not be named did great things. Terrible things, yes, but great. Harry shivered. He wasn't sure he liked Mr. Ollivander very much. He paid seven gold galleons for his wand, and Mr. Ollivander bowed them out of his shop. The late afternoon sun, sun hung low in the sky as Hagrid and Harry made their way back down Diagon Alley, back through the wall, back through the leaky cauldron, now empty. Harry didn't speak at all as they walked down the road. He didn't even notice how much people were gawking at them on the underground. That's the subway railroad in London, England. Laden as they were with all their funny-shaped packages, with the snowy owl asleep in a cage on Harry's lap, up another escalator out into Paddington Station, Harry only realized where they were when Hagrid tapped him on the shoulder. Got time for a bite before your train leaves, he said. He bought Harry a hamburger, and they sat down on plastic seats to eat them. Harry was looking around. Everything seemed so strange somehow. Are you all right? said Hagrid. You're a bit quiet. Harry wasn't sure he could explain. He'd had 
the best birthday of his life, and yet he chewed his hamburger trying to find the words. Everyone thinks I'm special, he said at last. All those people in the leaky cauldron, Professor Quirrell, Mr. Ollivander. But I don't know anything about magic at all. How can they expect great things? I'm famous, and I can't even remember what I'm famous for. I don't know what happened when Vol... Sorry, I mean, the night my parents died. Don't you worry, Harry. You'll learn fast enough. Everyone starts at the beginning at Hogwarts. You'll just be fine. Just be yourself. I know it's hard. You've been singled out, and that's always hard. But you'll have a great time at Hogwarts. I did. I still do, as a matter of fact. Hagrid helped Harry onto the train that would take him back to the Dursleys and then handed him an envelope. Your ticket for Hogwarts, he said. First of September, King's Cross. It's all on your ticket. Any problems with the Dursleys? Send me a letter with your owl. She'll know where to find me. See you soon, Harry. The train pulled out of the station. Harry wanted to watch Hagrid until he was out of sight. He rose in his seat and pressed his nose against the window, but he blinked and Harry had gone. Hagrid had gone. The next chapter will be The Journey from Platform Nine and Three Quarters. And I'll send that next time. XOXO. Night, night. Nightberry.